Well, hello, hello, and welcome, my Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your chakra check reading for March into April uh, 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mal, for short, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and Pisces Moon. <laughs> Very happy. Uh, to be serving you on this very first uh, chakra check reading that I have done, well, on my YouTube channel, I've done this uh, spread several times, several feels like hundreds of times for uh, my clients face to face. Occasionally I'll do it on a video read, but really I've been doing it uh, for a decade, so it's really kind of cool for me to do it in this format. Tweaked it a little bit. I think you're going to like it. Uh, I was going to do the true love, uh, not the true love reads, the twin flame reads, but eh, everybody's on lockdown, so <laughs> what's the point? Moot point, right? So uh, last night, uh, it, during Dark Moon, before it went into New Moon and Aries, which is when I'm doing this today, I figured why not start this on a new moon, uh, uh, they said, do a chakra check. I was like, oh, yeah, because it's about healing, but it's not just about physical healing. It's about uh, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual uh, healing. So uh, chakras, if you are familiar with them, you're familiar, but if you're not, the word chakra is Sanskrit. It means uh, wheel of life or wheel of light in Sanskrit. And though we're used to dealing with seven of them, in this spread we are uh, going to use eight, including the star center over the head, um, which some people call it the star center. Carolyn Mace calls it the eighth chakra in her book, Anatomy of the Spirit, was a, which was a pivotal work for me. Really do check out Anatomy of the Spirit. Um, it, it, the information in there is still quite relevant for its time. So. Uh, I think you'll get a kick out of it. We're not even doing them in a straight line. We're going to do three, then four, then one, three levels of power, and I will explain all of that as we go. Uh, by the way, if you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because, uh, it, you know, it helps get the info out there. And plus, uh, since my I am unplugged from time, so I'm following my inspiration, my guidance and grace. I took a nice three-hour nap today, if that's <laughs> if that's a nap, that's a sleep. So uh, just kind of going uh, where the vibes take me. Cool. Uh, this is a general read, however, uh, so if you get triggered, I get it, um, but it's a general read, right, for the Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising signs uh, and Venus signs. You'll see why I included Venus in this later. Um, so take what resonates, leave what does not, and check your other signs. There are only 18 cards going to hit the table. You'll see how that goes down, too. Uh, so we'll see how long these take. Of course, surrendered all of this to the divine. The divine's going to do the work through me. So we'll see what information comes through, shall we? Please remember to breathe as we do this. And uh, you will be so in the present moment, you will know if it's just the mind reacting to something or if it's really your energy system responding, right? Is it reaction or response? You're looking for the intuitive response. The reaction is often the personality, the ego, the mind uh, left unchecked, which will uh, kind of pick up the ball and run with it in a completely wrong direction. <laughs> cool. So uh, we're still using some of my usual decks, only four of this time around. Uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, shuffling both the Healing with the Angels, Oracle, Doreen Virtue, and the Daughters of the Moon. We're going to shuffle them in total. We're going to get the top eight cards blessed and ready to rock and roll, and then we'll add two more at the end. You'll like it. This is very helpful. We're going to be looking at eight flavors of power, one for each chakra. You ready? Let's do this. Nice deep breath. Oh, <laughs> my angels, <laughs> please, uh, top eight cards, chakra check spread <laughs> for this uh, Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign for this March into April 2020, whatever timing that is, whenever they see it, please. Uh, that we can take a look at the collective trends within the chakra systems of the Piscean Collective's Sun, Moon, Rising sign in tandem with their other signs, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. I have to remember Venus signs. Cool. So please, uh, top eight cards. Oh, thank you, my angels. Powers, thrones, dominions, which, you know, I usually say made mother crone for, the other, for this one. 
Uh, so now that's set. We're just going to do the same for this one. And I know I usually do this one as the voices of the goddesses, the divine feminine. This time it's the deities. It's both uh, masculine and feminine. Because otherwise I would have to bring out the, the other tarot deck. And this reading would be way too long and very complex. We're trying to go for simplicity here, but also uh, to get as much clarity as we can for you. Cool. Nice deep breath. My deities, <laughs> my gods and my goddesses, please. Top eight cards, uh, chakra spread, the chakra check spread for this Piscean Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus signs for this March to April 2020, please. G give us the eight flavors of power, one for each chakra going from root to star center, please. Uh, in clarity for them, for the Piscean Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Oh, close, but no cigar, you little hanger on the top. <laughs> there we go. Good, good, good. All right. Let's do this. As I've done in other readings, when I have both of them shuffled like that, I'm going to pull two at a time, just for brevity, right? So, uh, the first three down are going to be the root chakra, the sacrum, and the solar plexus. These three chakras navigate the physical world, the third dimension. So, the root chakra we're going to start with, uh, ruby red, right? The color red, uh, the one that connects you to the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the deadly sin for this one is hubris, toxic pride, and the grace is reverence, reverence for all of life, a unity consciousness in physical form, the subatomic particle, the quantum field, however you want to think of that, right? Uh, tribal power, your, this is why the Venus, your relationships, Venus, to uh, your tribes, and not just your genetic tribe, your friends, the country, right? Uh, I'm a New Yorker, so that's part of my tribe. I'm gay, LGBTQ, that's part of my tribe. So wh how, what's going on in your root chakra in terms of your tribal power? The sacred truth of the root chakra is all is one. Keep that in mind. Ready? Here we go. Root chakra for the Piscean Collective. Strength with freedom, right? So right now there is great strength for you in the root chakra, but and, and you know, we want that to be physical strength a lot of the time because it is um, in the root chakra if you prefer physical power, not just tribal power, but you know physical body strength. Uh, the root chakra governs all of the systems in your bodies, right? Like tribes of bones and nerves and, and uh, uh, organs and cells and tissues, that kind of stuff all working together as one, all is one. Uh, but here we're really looking at endurance. So if we are going to talk strength here, usually this is considered emotional or spiritual strength, that may be true, but it's being anchored into the root chakra. So there's really something about perhaps enduring what you're going through right now. <laughs> sort of makes sense with what's going on on planet Earth right now but with freedom. Now that might feel a little contradictory as I'm kind of feeling that fluctuation kind of go through uh, the quantum field for the Piscean Collectives here. Um, but to get that, the freedom there is the freedom to relax. It's the freedom to be in the physical body, the freedom to choose, okay, I don't know why I'm alive during this uh, incredibly challenging time, but I'm here and I have the freedom as to how I want to deal with this, particularly in the root chakra is where we get flight, right? <laughs> Fight, flight, or freeze, right? Uh, that instinct, that tribal thing. And perhaps as well, you are also free from some of your tribal patterning. Tribe esteem is not self-esteem. <laughs> Tribe esteem is when often we uh, hemorrhage our powers of choice um, our, our need to fit in outweighs us uh, wanting to really go our own way. So perhaps there is even some courage here about you kind of saying, well, I love my tribe, I love you all, but I came in to do something different perhaps than the rest of you, right? That I have the freedom to walk my own path. Uh, I can go my own way. You can call it another uh, lonely day. <laughs> so uh, that strength uh, of freedom. So there's really a wonderful opportunity for physical healing here too, but it is going to take endurance. Now, endurance is a different kind of strength. It's not necessarily muscular strength. That may be a part of it. 
That's what we think of usually when we think of you know, physical root chakra strength. But it is the ability to endure, to no matter what happens, to keep going, take another step, take another breath, take another step, take another breath, just keep going. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. A little apocalyptic family guy for you there. <laughs> okay, so there's our first one down. You getting how this works a little bit? Let's look at our second chakra, the sacrum. Now the sacrum is connected to the navel, so I want you to think umbilical cord. This is another relational one. This is about your relationships to another, right? Uh, uh, the sacred uh, truth here is honor one another, right? Uh, but not just to another person. People always want to make it romantic sexual, and I understand that. The second chakra governs your relationships with another, but it can also be to another thing. This is, uh, second chakra is about money, as well as sexuality, as well as, as it's one of the two uh, primary addiction chakras. So it can be your relationship to alcohol, to food, to sugar, to drugs, to sex, to the internet, even though we don't, do you think of the internet as one thing we do, but we experience many different things in it. So to think of your, my relationship with, boom, right? Uh, and the deadly sin is greed, <laughs> makes sense, right? Trying to fill up that emptiness inside, where what really fills up the emptiness inside is the grace of piety, which is seeing everything in your life as having a sacred context. Good, not just a sacred contract, a sacred context. So let's see uh, who we've got here in the second chakra. Okay, now I'm gonna say the name that's on this card, this tarot card, but we're gonna go deeper with it. It's the card of burnout, the eight of flames. But if you think of the Rider Waite Tarot, it's those wands, the Eight of Wands, like soaring through the air, right? So we're talking about fast motion and desire. And this sort of energy in the second chakra, particularly if you're being isolated, it can feel a little bit like chomping at the bit. But with the card of miracles here, I'm very happy to have this uh, card here being a Pisces moon, it's really saying that there is a fast moving miraculous thing going on in the second chakra, the sacral dynamic, because, because we are all perhaps being so very isolated, even if you're with people in your domain and the house in which you live, that there's so much time for self-reflection and self-healing unless you're in an essential business, right? But even then, right, it's a tricky time. A lot, everybody's sort of going within. We'll look at that personal power next in uh, the, the third chakra. Uh, but, but really to get that there are miracles that are happening on a one-on-one -on -one basis that we treat each other mercifully, right? That you're being merciful with people because you understand everybody's under pressure and that is being reciprocal. You are honoring one another on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but it's happening quickly. Now, just to clarify the definition of miracles, there it depends on who you ask, right? A, a miracle can mean a different thing to a different people. Uh, the two that I, I go generally with in terms of reading is the common vernacular of miracle is something happens that defies natural law, but yet we use that in other contexts. Uh, for example, someone's ill, uh, you say a prayer, you do a ritual, you do a spell, you do a healing, and they're healed, and it's a miracle, right? They're, they're in total remission. It was like they were never sick, right? Something that defies natural physical law. Uh, but the Course in Miracles definition here essentially is about where an ancient love has become a present hate. Uh, sorry, an ancient hate has become a present love. I'm sorry. I totally inverted that, but you get what I mean. It's the alchemy from lead to gold. It's the miracle of forgiveness. Now remember, I am a student of Course in Miracles. So uh, that whole course teaches you that the miracle itself is the alchemy of quantum forgiveness. It's the alchemical uh, ingredient that transforms pain to peace, fear to love, shadow to light, illusion to truth, or an ancient hatred into a present love. All right? So a really great opportunity for relational healing. Now you go, again, why I included the Venus signs in here, because that is very much one-on-one -on -one relationships, as well as your relationships with your tribes. So uh, in, in terms of the tribal relationships, we've got a major arcana card there, with the card of freedom. So, you know, there's some endurance going on there that's freeing you up in some ways. 
uh, and in your one-on-one -on -one relationships, there are miracles afoot and it feels like it's happening very quickly. Keeping in mind the word burnout, yes, can absolutely mean that if you've been over committing, if you've been saying no when your gut tells you to say yes or yes when your gut says to, to or really that's the one. When you say yes when your gut tells you to say no, that's really the one where we end up burning out, right? Giving more uh, than we can replenish for ourselves. Um, but really what I'm getting from this with the card of miracles is perhaps there is, uh, you're getting more of the sacred contracts in your life uh, and the sacred context uh, that everything is here to teach you, including uh, your addictions, including the things that come into your life, like a book or a teaching, but they're all sort of in the individual electromagnetic umbilical field. You with me? I hope so. Solar plexus, personal power. This is also where we store <laughs> our honor code, right? It's, it's it, when somebody asks you to do something and it's not in alignment with like your highest wisdom and honor, it goes, <laughs> it goes I always use this as an example. Um, someone asks you to lie, but it's for a friend's birthday party and this friend is always doing things for other people. And they say, well, can you like take this person out, like uh, get them out of the house so that we can decorate the house? And you're like, I'm in, right? Solar plexus goes, yeah, 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 right? Because they're a little dastardly and muddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, if it's a politician, <laughs> it says, will you tell my wife I was with you this night? And it goes, like, you want to throw up? That's a violation of your honor code, which is why the sacred truth here is honor thyself, not just honor myself or yourself, thyself. The divine solar plexus energy uh, telling you this is not in alignment with the truth of who I am. This also acts a bit of it, a little bit like a gas gauge. So when somebody asks you to do something and this goes, Bleh, it's really saying I don't have the energy for it right now. Honor that. That's just the tip of that iceberg. <laughs> so this is self-esteem and boundaries and all that kind of stuff. So let's see what you got going on there. Well, we've got oppression half of the devil card in this deck, the other half is the coyote woman, we'll see if that pops up, and the one of trust. Now what this says to me right off the bat is that, sure, I bet you would love to trust your gut here in your solar plexus, but uh, it's being oppressed. Now the thing about this card is, I know you probably can't see it, there is a woman buried under all of these stones, but the stones have people's faces carved into them. In other words, this could very much be this tribal dynamic or certain people in your life that you go against your solar plexus personal power for. Now don't beat yourself up for that, that's part of the curriculum. But that there is an opportunity for you to trust that this happened for a purpose, not a reason, and that you can take, and that's the thing, she could one by one remove these rocks uh, from, on, from uh, on top of her and walk away, although through some of the doorways which are on fire, she could get up and walk away. Just like in uh, the card of the devil in the Rider Waite deck, the two little demonettes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I see you. Hold on. Kitty cat's about to knock some shit over. Hold on. It's my little one. <laughs> He's not so little. He's a moose, but... Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, the little demonettes in, uh, in the Rider Waite uh, tarot for uh, uh, the card of the devil, they have these chains around their neck, but they are very loose. They could easily slip them off and walk away. And so it is the possibility here that if you can really trust that gut, don't worry about getting it right or getting it wrong. Just take baby steps, right? Solar plexus, honor thyself. It starts with listening, like something feels off, right? Did you ever get that? It's like... Something feels off and the brain wants more data before you honor it. Take a baby step and say, you know what? I gotta pull back from this a little bit. I have to start removing some of this oppression, which is the name of the card. So if you are being oppressed or if you feel like you are being oppressed, uh, there's something here about really trusting the solar plexus guidance and grace, which often speaks in a, a, a wave like, ha ah, or, Ooh, right? pay attention to that because that's your guidance. That's your intuition. No one else may have that. That's where self-esteem and intuition meet. So you want to develop your, uh, have healthier self-esteem. Remember self-esteem self -esteem 
is a verb, not a noun, then take baby steps in your intuition. You want to develop your intuition. Estimate yourself as, you know, I'm a divine being in process. Everybody's doing the best that they can. I'm doing the best that I can, right? You sort of get the idea, hopefully. All right, so there is our third dimensional patterning and your three levels of uh, relationship, tribal, one-on-one, -on -one, and your relationship with yourself in the third dimensional world. These next four, uh, the, so these this first three is called the literal world. This next is called the personal world or the personal level of power. Physical, this is the uh, emotional and mental world that make up the personal world, the world behind your eyes. Heart chakra, emotional power. See, the flavor changes as you keep going up. What's going on in the heart chakra for the Piscean collectives? Well, we've got Pele the volcano, the five of flames, which people don't like the fives in the tarot. They are numbers of change, however, the fives, right? Like the pentacle, fire, earth, air, water, spirit. Uh, the integration of spirit into the five, uh, four other elements, uniting them, which really they are all manifestations of spirit. Uh, but this is something that's been churning in your heart for a while. Now, the deadly sin here, I forgot, the deadly sin <laughs> of the solar plexus is entitlement, uh, but the grace that heals that or balances that out is understanding, the grace of understanding, but it's not this kind of understanding, it's that really getting something on a gut level. Here, the deadly sin of the heart is wrath, and this can be a little wrathful? Yeah, it's it's the volcano. So passion that has been repressed for a time. Keeping in mind, you have this in the solar plexus, right? This oppression. Something has been repressed, oppressed. Power and passion and desire and building up. I want something, I want something, I want something, and it finally poof, explodes. But with the card of blessings, really says that if you can allow yourself to explode in a healthy way. Now, go, Mark, how do you do that? Well, gestalt therapy, right? Or uh, journaling, or uh, screaming into a pillow, or inner child work. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, you know I, I talk a lot about how Matt Kahn reframed inner child work for me, which I've been doing since the 80s. Uh, John Bradshaw, homecoming, and meditations, and all that kind of stuff, hypnotherapy. Uh, I had a rough-ish childhood, as many of us did, so it's just something that was handed to me early on in my path, and I've been working it. Even Ho'oponopono, if you've ever uh, read Zero Limits, has quite a bit to do uh, with uh, the inner child. Uh, this, that there is a blessing that can have here, you can have here if you think of the heart chakra as your inner child, and this inner child is probably angry, or it has something that it, it really, really wants. Its heart's desires have been blocked, and it's just frustrated and angry and getting ready to blow. But as it does, it will release blessings as long as you don't get possessed by the lava, if you will, by the molten magma, right? You, you want to channel that in a way that is a blessing upon you, perhaps blessing that child. Because uh, I will certainly say uh, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with sadness and depression than I am with frustration and anger. It often does take me by surprise as a, a Piscean, right? I'm used to the depths of the ocean, not so much the underwater volcano. Uh, so when it does happen, it really, I have to make sure that I put the phone down, right? That I don't text people, that I don't lash out, and that I don't pick up the black candle at midnight, right? It's like, no, allow this, because remember, we're not just clearing our own emotional stuff right now, we are clearing the collective as well, right? And a lot of people are feeling frustrated and angry that the things they do every day for their own pleasure and comfort are being truncated, that they're, they really can't do those things, they're being limited. So there can be a buildup of that pressure, um, but, and yet there is a blessing here that might be hidden. I'm also going to say that heart chakra blessings really are as simple as, I love you, it's okay, you're allowed to feel this, it's okay to feel this, I love you, it's okay, like talking to an angry wrathful, furious uh, five-year-old child, but the grace that heals wrath is the grace of fortitude, right? And that is emotional strength. If you like emotional endurance, which I usually associate with the card of strength, but here we have that in the physical power. So we have, uh, we have that going for us. 
That can also say that you probably have the freedom within you in the root chakra to be able to contain what you're feeling, right? Contain it, feel it, heal it, because if you're feeling it, you're healing it, but rather than repress it or be possessed by it, you are witnessing it, you are breathing through it, you are letting it come out in a healthy way that does not destroy you or harm others. Helpful, right? Throat chakra, willpower. You now, people don't get what willpower means. Growing up, I thought willpower was about picking yourself up by your bootstraps and doing the hard thing and putting your nose to the grindstone. To find out that the word will means choice, right? Your choices and your decisions are your willpower. Will you or won't you, right? When someone leaves a last will and testament, what is that? It's their final choices and decisions about what they want to have done with their body, right? A living will. Uh, uh, their their property, their bank accounts, their all that kind of stuff. So let's see what's going on. Oh, by the way, there are three modes to the throat chakra, spit, swallow, and chew, or at least that's what I call them. Because sometimes you're supposed to just spit it out, say what you gotta say. Sometimes you're supposed to mm, keep that to yourself. Plenty of times when I'm reading people, I see things and my God's like, they are not to hear that from you this way right now, right? You swallow that. But then there is chew. Uh, jagged little pill, <laughs> little Alanis Morissette. Let me chew off those jagged little edges, because otherwise that could be a very bitter pill to swallow. Uh, that is certainly part of compassion there, speaking truth in a way that is loving and, uh, well, truth without compassion is brutality, says the Dalai Lama, and I try and live by that, but not when I'm exploding. That's why I lock, lock down, <laughs> to keep my mouth shut and, and give that child its voice. What's going on in the throat chakras? How fascinating. Here, we've got the card of justice, Ma'at. Now, I haven't even brought in the, the Kabbalah, because uh, there are uh, 10 spheres in the Kabbalistic tree of life, but if you line them up, there are seven levels, right? Just like the seven chakras. There's stuff going on in the eighth chakra too, but not dealing with that right now. Uh, one of them is justice. <laughs> the ones, there are two spheres in the third chakra, justice, and mercy. So this is very much what this card is about, is about justice and mercy. It is what you are saying, is it just, is it true, is it fair, and is it merciful? Just like I said, can you speak truth with compassion? And with that, we have the card of surrender and release, which is interesting because there are also seven sacraments. If you go read Anatomy of the Spirit, it's all in the book. I can't do that for every single position. We'll be here forever. Surrender your will to the divine is the is the sacred truth, as is the, the sacrament of confession, getting things off your chest, release. So surrender and release in the throat chakra uh, with ma'at. It, yes, it will bring you into balance, but this could very much be a confessional, right? Uh, confessing, by the way, you do not need someone to confess to. Uh, you can light a candle, talk to a candle, you light a candle in your mind. You can do it through prayer. I do it all the time. I live alone. I do have my confessors, but I find on my path, uh, my guides listen <laughs> very, very well and often send me exactly what I need to help resolve what's going on. So with this emotional power, ah, right, wrath, with blessings coming up through the, the uh, throat chakra in a way that surrenders and releases the pressure in a compassionate yet just, fair, true way. You're quite symbolically, but even literally getting the energy off your chest, right? Up and out. So this would be more of a, maybe a, a, a chew, spit balance, but definitely not a swallow, because I think the swallowing of your will, your your fire, your element of fire, is what has your heart a bit inflamed here. Isn't this cool? I mean, nothing like a good chakra spread, right? Uh, let's look at the third eye. Now, I'm going to say Ajna is uh, the Sanskrit word. I know the name, the Sanskrit names for all the third eye, but I find this one to be fascinating. Ajna, A-J-N-A -A in Sanskrit means servant, and yet we are all ruled by our minds for a huge part of our earthly journey is lifetime after lifetime. You can see what when the servant becomes the master, when the mind rules the system, how things become very cold, very mechanistic, very not balanced with the heart, very unmerciful, very not compassionate. Um, and, and so it's a very fascinating chakra, the third eye, and everybody loves 
the third eye chakra, right? It even gets like jewelry, right? In in in, uh, in India, it gets decorated and as it should. It's beautiful, but the third eye can only see one of two things in any given moment: truth or illusion, right? So seek only truth. Uh, yeah, well, let, let's see what comes. I know I'm not talking about the deadly sins. By the way, well, the deadly sin of the third chakra is gluttony. Keep making the same choice over and over and over again, even though it's not working for you. Uh, and interesting, the uh, grace is counsel, <laughs> which is very much about confession, not just advice. It's, it's when you counsel another and you're coming from your heart, from your soul and speaking that wisdom, right? Here in the third eye, the deadly sin is envy, right? Not just jealousy. Jealousy on steroids, envy, right? And uh, the grace is knowledge, just not information, data, but sacred knowledge. Like, for instance, the sacred truth, seek only truth. We are all one, for example. So that if you really get the sacred truth that we are all one, right, going back to the root chakra, you get that, oh, we're, there's only one quantum field. There's only one of us here. So it kind of cancels out envy and jealousy, but that doesn't mean that this other stuff going on uh, will change so easily. So what's going on in the third eye here? Well, they are really having fun with us because we've got Archangel Michael, the Archangel of Truth. <laughs> Seek only truth in the third eye with what? The witch. In this deck, it's the magician card, the card of the witch. So there is something here about a decision. Uh, the card of the magician is not just about being a stagnant lightning rod, right? Waiting for the divine. It is about participating in the process of creativity, that there is a choice, there is a decision, there is something downloads from the, 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 the eighth chakra, right, down into the crown chakra, like the radar dish, and it hits the third eye and it starts languaging. And, it, and it, it starts putting it into form and time and space, and then you choose it, then it hits your emotional field, all of that can happen like lightning, but then it has to make it through the lower chakras into physical form. When we're talking about the card of the witch here, we're also talking about alignment, right? Is this what it, it takes sometimes a while for us to get it balanced and in alignment in our heads? So, an energy can go from the crown chakra to the third eye to the throat, back to the third eye, down to the heart. How does that feel? Solar plexus, no, back and forth. Uh, Carolyn Mace uh, says that uh, these four chakras uh, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown are the alchemical laboratory. I love that, right? So, kind of going back and forth, feeling it out. Will you bring it down into full manifestation? But certainly here, we're also talking about a possible vision of some kind. Remember, seek only truth. Now, the thing about seeking only truth in this context is that oftentimes uh, the truths that we seek will shatter the illusions and the beliefs from tribal stuff that we were raised or that we believe uh, in our one-on-one -on -one relationships or that we believe about ourselves. So uh, it, it absolutely can inflame the heart chakra because we so identify uh, with what we believe, right? We polarize ourselves, particularly politically, right? Or, you know, about what should be eaten or shouldn't, right? Instead of keeping it in the eye, not the third eye, the, the eye, that's Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm gonna keep it in the eye, right? Uh, then this is about really seeing uh, clearly, seeking only truth, but also making the adjustments doing perhaps the prayer, the meditation, the, 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 the visualization of a higher power of some kind uh, to, in order to see, uh, to see clearly no matter what. Like I want, it's one of the uh, mantras in the Matt Kahn Healing Mantra deck. We're gonna end with that as I usually do. Um, uh, I, I, want, I, I am willing to see clearly no matter the outcome. I am willing to see clearly no matter the outcome. That could take a little while to play itself out. But remember, if you can go through some kind of rite of confession, even just talking to your higher self or your soul, that is going to release some of the pressure here in the heart, perhaps taking some of the stress or the fear of loss, because uh, we have to lose an illusion which isn't a real thing to start with, uh, in order for truth to dawn like light in the third eye. The crown chakra. Uh, <laughs> live in present time, right? Uh, the, the grace of wisdom, but the deadly sin of sloth.
Now, honestly, if you're going to have a favorite, Sloth is my favorite deadly sin because you don't have to do much. But it's not about being lazy. It's about spiritually, right, spiritual power. What you already know to be true to be wise, but you don't act on it, right? You don't incorporate it. It's like, well, I know I should forgive, but nah, nah, I don't want to, right? Or, you know, I really uh, should uh, drink more water. I really should do this, although should's not the best word. I knew it would be better for me if I did, but nah, right? So it's not just about not wanting to vacuum or do laundry. That's lazy. Uh, sloth, uh, particularly when it comes to forgiveness, life moves at the speed of forgiveness because forgiveness, as we said, is the miracle of alchemy. So if you're carrying lead, energy does not pass through lead, but if you can alchemize it into gold, you get more of this eight of flames electricity going on. So let's see what's going on in your radar dish. What's going on in your crown chakra? Uh, live in present time. Oh, wow, interesting. You've got the angel card of focus. So right there, that is telling you to focus here. Now, the thing is, is the crown chakra is not mental power. It's spiritual power. So it's not about focusing the mind. It is about transcending the mind. And what's in the crown chakra but the ace of pentacles, a brand new opportunity that will eventually come into physical form, but you can think of this as, as the this was in the eighth chakra up here, and it poof, now it's in the crown chakra, so it's gonna right poof, come into that. Uh, I'm gonna put all this together when I pop up the picture. Uh, we'll, we'll do the process of incarnation from spirit into form uh, with the chakras here, but this does make sense to really focus more in your spiritual power, single pointed focus meditation, but not necessarily the visualization part of it, although it's often the visualization in the third eye that allows us to access what's going on here in the crown chakra. But there is a healthy potential here, something that spirit wants to incarnate into form through you that you need to focus on. That's just lovely. I like this spread for us Pisces big time. Uh, last card down, at least for the chakras, then we'll get our two, like, helper cards. Now the eighth chakra, the home of the archetypes, the star center, the upper room. It's been called so many different things. Hovers above the head. Uh, it, some say it's the realm of the higher self, the fifth dimensional self. If you like this uh, first three, right, uh, the physical world is uh, the literal level of power. The heart, throat, third eye, and crown, the mental, emotional, is the personal level of power. This third one, only one chakra we're going to be looking at here, is the symbolic level of power, or if you really like the spirit world or the mystical world, because it is a mystery to us, usually until we croak or if we have such a convincing vision and experience of the divine that, you know, we're convinced forever, but you'll never be able to convince somebody else of it unless they've been there, right? So let's see what's going on in the eighth. Well, let's start with new love, <laughs> okay? This one's really fun too, but let's look at that. Now, we often think of new love as purely uh, romantic, and we'll see what the, the whispers of love say about that. That's why I, I'm using those two other decks as clarifiers uh, for the whole chakra system. But definitely a new love in the eighth chakra means that it's something that's not going to come to you as much as it's going to come down and through you. And with what? The Ten of Pentacles, the Wealth card, the Harvest card. So this love, whether or not it involves other people, this is a very tribal picture, but need not be so. It can be the full and fulfilling manifestation in, the, in that chakra. And here you have the Ace and the Crown, the beginnings of it. So it's almost like this Ten, I like doing this, this Ten up in the, the Eighth chakra is dropping down like, okay, here's the first step of that. Release the first pentacle. Boom, down it comes, down it comes, down it comes. Boom, the next one, down it comes, down it comes, down it comes. Because essentially uh, the chakra system, uh, star system, the star chakra down to the root um, is a channel, right? So we are channels of divine creativity. That's why we incarnate it, right? To take thought, uh, or at least spirit, bring it into thought, bring it into choice, bring it into emotion, gathering time and space until it hits the Earth's magnetic field and then we act on it or it manifests and comes to us. Fascinating. A little bit deeper 
than I'm used to doing here on this channel, but way into it. Shway. Uh, let's get you this uh, whisper of love from your higher self. Now, if the uh, eighth chakra, the star center, is the abode of the higher self, fifth dimensional and above, because you can say this, these first three are third dimension. Uh, these four are the fourth dimension, time, because it takes time to heal and align all this stuff. Then this is the fifth dimensional unity consciousness that you hear so much about nowadays. <laughs> Going all the way back to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali thousands of years ago, but we're calling it the fifth dimension. <sighs> that did that cover of the uh, song Hair <laughs> from uh, the dawning of the age of Aquarius from the, the, the play Hair. Um, let's see what your higher self and mine too, Pisces moon that I am. I'm psyched for this for me. <clears throat> let's see what the collective higher self say, shall we? Breathe. <sighs> the higher selves of all involved. See, this is all chakra stuff every time I do this, right? Because I'm drawing it down this way. The higher selves of all involved, please, one card in clarity for this Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Uh, what's going on uh, for them overall in their chakra system for this uh, March to April 2020, please? What is your overall whisper of love for the Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs? Uh, involving their chakra check here. For, oh, I felt that one, March to April. Oh, there we go, 2020. Receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. Now, I, I am feeling that receiving at least something physical in the non-physical, it's on its way to you, but it's aligning you with that sense of new love. So, so to be able to give and receive, right? Uh, receive with love and appreciation. That definitely speaks here of the second chakra as well, that fast-moving eight of flames uh, with the card of miracles. But can you trust your gut, right? When I pop up the picture in a few minutes, uh, of the spread, I'll be able to see what else pops, but that does make sense to be in the receptive mode, right? To receive, uh, and all you really have to do in terms of interaction is say thank you, um, but to actually open up your heart, right? Uh, to surrender and release whatever your unmerciful judgments are, are here, because it does feel like this, uh, this, ex this volcanic explosion of the heart uh, is, is going to bring forth these blessings and now to receive uh, with love and appreciation those blessings that are coming in. Like when you're going through a hard time and someone shows up and helps you out. Like don't let the ego get in the way. Just say, oh, thank you so much. You know, be open and receptive because it's a wonderful way of expressing love to others. Let's get your last card down. Uh, from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn, a healing mantra because this is all about healing your eight flavors of power, right? Nice deep breath. <sighs> from the Ascended Masters, please, one card in clarity. What is the perfect healing mantra for this Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, uh, Venus sign? in their chakra check here to help them heal, right? Perfect healing mantra, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign March to April 2020, please Ascended Masters, put it right in my hand. Is that one or two? That's two. Take the bottom one, that's new. Let's see what you got. Grounding my energy. <laughs> Grounding my energy. Uh, it is safe to be in my body. There is your mantra. Of course, I'm gonna read it from the bookie book. Grounding my energy. Hold on one second. E F G. Grounding my energy. It is safe to be in my body. When your energy is grounded, you are no longer wrestling with the pain of the past or the chasing after potential future outcomes. You dare to demonstrate your very best attributes and qualities, no matter how you are perceived or received by others. With your energy grounded, your mind can relax as your body becomes a more enjoyable 
environment to inhabit. It's totally about this energy coming down in through the chakra system, affecting your nervous system and being here in the now, right? To receive this divine energy moving through you with love and appreciation. This mantra is ideal for replacing uh, compulsive thoughts uh, with that witch card there with Archangel Michael, that makes sense. Releasing addictive behaviors that might be going on here in the second chakra. By the way, the throat chakra is also the addiction gluttony uh, center, but I'm not seeing them. Oh, surrender and release with balance and mercy might be there as well. Uh, and finding stability, which is that card of strength with that card of freedom. So I like that. Grounding my energy. It is safe to be in my body. Uh, let's pop up the overview picture and see what else pops. Even though I laid them down from root to star, I'm going to read them from star to root, right? Here we go. Magic clap. I should probably call it mystical clap. Sounds like a disease. Uh, so we start in the eighth chakra here in reverse uh, with the Ten of Pentacles, the harvest. There's a harvest in the non-physical, in the fifth dimensional uh, realm of your energy field that wants to carry with it this new love into a complete and abundant physical form. Now, this could absolutely be the inspiration that translates itself into action and choices that bring you the physical substance you need, keeping in mind that we've got that lovely card of endurance there in the root chakra where this will eventually land if it makes its way down the energy system. Uh, and then in the crown chakra, we've got that card of focus with the ace of pentacles. And what I'm getting off that now is really focus on the potential. You don't have to rush ahead into it as the it is safe to be in my body mantra uh, talks about. It's not about, you know, grieving over the past so much or chasing after future outcomes as much as it is allowing that crown chakra to be open, that new potentialities, new inspirations are coming in. So focus more on inspiration, at least right now than perspiration. And what's going on in the third eye? We've got the witch there with Archangel Michael. So there's definitely some alignment of the mind. This may take a while aligning your air, fire, water, earth with that inspiration, uh, making the decision to incarnate it down into form. But in the throat chakra, certainly there is a surrender and release here as you balance uh, with the card of justice, like as you really chew on this, finding the balance of how to do this mercifully. Do I talk about it, spitting it out, sharing it with people? Do I swallow it? Do I keep it to myself? Or do I just sort of chew on it for a little bit, sharing it a little bit here, a little bit there, releasing the energy deeper down into the heart chakra? Now, this is where this uh, Five of Flames, Pele the Volcano, could also be in, uh, interpreted as passion, right? That ability to really ignite the heart fire, to put your heart into it. Love is divine power is the sacred truth of the heart chakra. Did not say that before. And in that divine power flowing through the heart with that kind of passion and intensity, not just, you know, the rage and the wrath, that could be there too, going from uh, root uh, up, but from uh, the star center down, this could absolutely be great blessings of divine passion moving through you, that creativity, the passion to uh, create, to bring something into form. However, it does feel like there is some sort of oppression or blockage here in the solar plexus about trusting your gut, trusting your own personal power, perhaps not estimating yourself, maybe not worthy of what it is that you want, but capable of manifesting that. And remember, that can come from the electromagnetic connections of other people's thoughts, opinions, behaviors, uh, emotional baggage that you might be uh, carrying in the gut that way. The people who have written upon you, but remember, they can only write upon you what was written upon them. It's just a big game, a telephone, uh, psychically, energetically. But what's going on there in the second chakra? Perhaps there is uh, some stuff really transforming there very quickly with both the Eight of Flames and the Card of Miracles there, that uh, particularly in terms of sexuality, creativity, finances, right? Your one-on-one -on -one relationships, very, very fast miracles in play there. So though you may not be able to uh, co-create this with hundreds of other people right away. There might be one other person or maybe on, uh, two or three, but that you're sort of building this on a one-on-one -on -one, 
uh, basis uh, somehow. Only you will know what that means to you in your situation. Bringing it down uh, into that root chakra with strength and freedom that there is, if you can endure this, there is great freedom here for you. And keeping in mind that so many of us are... Um, uh, uh, what is that called? Uh, uh, sequestered, right? Right? Sheltering in place, as it were. Uh, that you know, to know that that over this next two months, we're going to have a lot more freedom, at least the rest of March, hopefully into April, or at least some plans coming into uh, manifestation here through the chakric system. Keeping in mind, uh, the higher self says, uh, receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. Please do keep that in mind. And remember, with this mantra of grounding my energy, it is safe to be in my body. Now, that might not be uh, very um, popular <laughs> or believable right now, but still a brilliant mantra that will really allow you to be where you are. Uh, it is safe to be in my body, that you are a soul that was chosen to play a role with the name of the body that you are in, uh, and that you can fulfill your role in the divine plan. And just scanning here right now, you have three major arcana cards, the witch, the card of justice, and the card of strength, which together make a pretty potent uh, trio. Uh, but can you allow that new love in the crown chakra with the ten of pentacles harvest that real potentiality of fulfillment physical stability to really incarnate as feeling safe in your body, giving you the ability to endure with freedom. Good clap on that one. Well, uh, Pisces, uh, there you go. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. I like this spread very much for us. Uh, it feels really good. It feels really stable. Oh, and I forgot. No, we also have the card of oppression. You have one, two, you have a the card of oppression, the card of the magician, so oppression is the devil, uh, the magician, the card of the witch, justice, the card of ma'at, and strength, the card of strength. So uh, four out of eight, so half of these are major arcana, that's pretty cool. Um, but remember to keep that mantra in mind, it is safe to be in my body, that feels like that's what's going to trigger and allow you to relax and come into alignment for this divine energy to make its way fully into physical form, also known as the process of incarnation, bringing spirit into flesh, the language of creativity. Cool, cool. May you be blessed with all that you need in your chakra system this, uh, <laughs> this March, what's remaining of March into April 2020, that you may heal, that you may grow, that you may balance your powers within you and be the walking piece of heaven on earth that you incarnated to be for the well-being of all. And so it is, so mo to be, and so it is. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this. Please comment if you like this. This is a bit much, uh, but I think in the times that we're in, uh, might be giving people, even if you listen to this again in a week or so, or you watch this again in a week or so, it might make more sense as this stuff makes its way down uh, from the star to the seed, if you will, from the, the star to the root. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for watching and wishing you, as I always do, hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.